Hello and welcome to the 12th video in this series of videos on Programmer Chess Engine in C. So the last video, if you went through it, you'll remember I explained about how you generate a unique key using exclusive OR. And in this video we're actually going to set, develop the function to, or write out the function to generate our unique 64-bit key for a chess position. One thing for a start, this is the position key is also known as a hash key. And whenever I say to, we're going to hash something in or out, I mean we're basically going to exclusive or that number in or out. And they're interchangeable, and I've done this video about four times now because something's gone wrong each time, or I've forgotten to press record. And I've realized that I keep saying hash instead of position key. So when I do, that's what I mean. To keep this video short, because a couple of versions I've done previously were about 30 minutes long, I'm going to do a bit of a copy and paste in this video because it's not actually very difficult what we're doing. It's exactly the same concept as the previous video, but nor the actual code, uh, only the actual code for the chess engine. So the first thing we need to do, I've got three arrays here. You remember the previous video we used random numbers to generate our unique key. Well, we need more than four random numbers like in the last video. We actually need a whole stack of random unsigned 64-bit numbers here and we need some for the pieces but also indexed by square because of course pieces on their own won't be enough to be unique because you could have a position with four pawns on the board but if one of them moves to a different square then the key should also change because the position has changed so we need pieces indexed here and then I've got the squares for each of the pieces also here in this two-dimensional array We've got one key for the side key because we'll be hashing in a random number if it's white to move. So we don't we only need one of those. And you remember for the castling, we've basically got one, two, three, four bits to represent white queen, white king, black queen, and black king side castling. And of course that's the bits are worth one, two, four, and eight, which goes up to fifteen. So we've got zero to fifteen or sixteen castle keys that we need. And now we need to fill these arrays with random 64-bit numbers. So up here I've got a macro which at first glance might look horrible, but it isn't. All it's doing is filling 64 bits with random numbers. And the way it's doing it is, and I'll just do a little comment here to try and explain if I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, 15 bits, good. So I've got 60 bits here, and let's put another 4 bits on the end. 2, 3, 4, good. I've got 64 bits here. Now, when rand generates a random number, oh, and by the way, I've included stdlib.h standard library to use rand in init.c here. When it generates a random number, it generates a a 15-bit random number. So we would get by the by a random number generation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 bits. And our 64-bit random number would look like this. It would never be any bigger, so we would only be using these bits. And because of the amount of positions available in chess, which is astronomical, we need to be filling the full 64 bits we have available. So what this macro is doing, on this line here, it's generating a random number and we fill with randomly these bits here. On the next line, it's generating these bits but shifting them 15 bits to the left. So we're filling these bits here on the second line here where all the ones are. And the next line is then shifting 30 bits to the left and I'm sure you get the idea what's going on here. We fill then this third section of bits here. And the next line is doing exactly the same thing but shifting 45 bits to the left and filling these bits here. And this simply leaves us then with 4 bits on the end. And all we do is take yet another random number and we AND this bitwise with in hexadecimal here 0 by f because 0 by f or f in hexadecimal is simply 4 bits like this. So we bitwise AND the last 4 bits of that 15 bit random number and shift that left by 60 so we fill these four bits here. So the upshot of all of it is, is when we add all these numbers together, we end up then with a random number filling randomly these 
64 bits here with a 0 or a 1 and a random 64 bit number. So I'll leave that there just for a couple of seconds hoping it makes a little bit of sense and now I'm going to delete it. And now we need the function to actually fill these arrays and I'm literally going to brutally copy and paste this in because it's completely understandable even if you're just starting out in C. It's simply a couple of loops filling our variables here with random numbers. The next thing we need to do is take these three variables here and quickly shove them in the global section because we'll be needing them later on in the chess program in defs.h and the other thing we need to do now is actually work on the code for generating our unique position key. Oh, one thing I've forgotten actually is we need to put in it hash keys. Ah, I've already got it down here from a previous video, that's cheating, but you need to put in it hash keys are also in the all in it function, otherwise we won't fill these random arrays and we'll end up with the same position key of zero all the time later on. Okay, so now let's move on to generating this position key. And this is generated in exactly the same way we generated our key from four pieces in the previous video. So I'm going to take this function here called generate position key where are we hash keys I'm going to paste it in and then I'm going to talk through how it's actually working so we've got some variable definitions here and the key one is this unsigned 64-bit integer which is the final key we're going to be returning we're taking in a pointer to our position or whatever position we want to generate the key for and it's also made constant so that because it won't be altered inside this function because we'll actually be returning the key rather than setting it on the position inside this function that's just personal preference the way to do it so the first thing I do is inside this for loop here is loop through all of the squares on the board and set piece equal to whatever value is stored in the array at that square now that value in the border squares will be no square so if piece is not equal to no square then it must be from the actual chessboard so one of the 64 internal squares and therefore if it's not equal to empty then it must be greater than or equal to a white pawn or less than or equal to black piece, black king, it must be a piece and I've put an assert in here because if it then isn't then we're going to be indexing off our piece keys array and causing problems generating an incorrect key but assuming it is we then hash in whatever number is stored at in the piece keys array for this piece and square the next thing we do is we say if it's white to move then let's hash in the side key and then the en passant square. I'm assuming you're familiar with the en passant rule, but if a pawn has moved forward two squares on the previous move, then the en passant square will be set, which means it will not be equal to no square, and if it's not, then it must be greater than or equal to zero or less than 120, otherwise we're going to be outside our array indexing again, which is why the asserts here. And assuming all's well there with the assert, then we hash in, and I've used, because we only need the not to 119, so 120 base indexing for the en passant square, but we've already generated a load of those when we did the piece keys array, so I'm simply using always the in the 2D array, the array of 120 squares indexed by empty or zero. Here, so we hash that in. Next thing we do, or the last thing, is hash in our castle permission key, and you remember that castling can be anything from naught, the castle permission, up to 15 because we're using 4 bits, which is naught to 15 to represent our castle permission and I've got another assert in here just to check that the castle permission is also sensible otherwise we're going to be generating again an incorrect key and the last thing we do then is return this key so we need to take this generate position key function here now and we need to add it into our defs.h because we'll be using it elsewhere in the program and save and that's it. I'm sorry it had so much copying and pasting so there'll be a bit of pausing the video and typing things in. You can also, the code will be available as in the previous couple of videos for download anyway. 
but it's not very complicated what's being done. The theory of it's been already explained in the previous video, and I don't want the video running to 40 minutes watching me type out silly loops on the page when there are more interesting things to be getting on with. OK, I think we might be slowly getting finally in a position where we can start reading in a position string and setting up a chessboard. Thanks very much for watching. Chris, quest comments, questions, criticisms, always welcome on YouTube.